It is not a surprise that people right here in Japan are very creative and love innovation. From vending machines to robotics, from science to anime and trains, the inventive of the people of the rice sun are countless. We are here to explore how technology are adopted so quickly here in Japan. Japan is a very highly educated country with prestigious universities and top-level institutions in science and technology. There is also a need for entrepreneurship here, that we can see it everywhere. But there is something else more behind those motivations that inspire the creation of these new ideas. But how do they do it? To answer that question, we have come to this corner to learn more about Dr. Nakamaste. We are here in the middle of Tokyo. This is the home of the most famous and flamboyant inventor of all times. This is Dr. Nakamatsu's home. Dr. Nakamatsu claims more than 3,500 patents. He invented even the floppy disk. Dr. Nakamatsu was born in 1928. He is 95 years old. He attended the University of Tokyo. This eccentric inventor gets inspiration and ideas from something he called the creative process, which included listening to music and diving underwater. Nakamatsu claims more patents than any other inventors, which included the floppy disk, the digital watch, Enerex, a system for generating oxygen and hydrogen, five foam, jumping shoes with the spring on their soles, cerebrates, an arm chair that improves mental function by cooling the head and heating the feet, a cigarette light device for activate the brain, and of course the popular wig for self-defense to hit an attack. Traditions and innovation are not antagonistic characteristics in Japan. What's more, they coexist side by side in this remarkable nation. In fact, Japan holds the secret to their success deep in their cultural heritage, which formed the foundation for embracing innovation without sacrificing tradition. The main principle in every aspect of Japanese life is Kaizen, which means relentless pursuit of continuous improvement. That particular Japanese mindset is key to their own success as a nation. This important concept is rooted in a day-to-day -day activities resulting in meticulous attention to detail and commitment to quality.
The car manufacturer industry is a clear example of rapid transformation from combustion cars to EVs. This challenging environment will test this old principle. How Japanese manufacturers will respond to competition from neighbors countries like China and South Korea? For most of 20 and 21st centuries, the Japanese automotive industry has hegemony in making combustion cars and they have done very well. For a minute and be quiet, it feels like it was before. But in Japan, innovation means helping people rather than just profiting. A clear example is in this robotic cafe, where the fishing staff work from home because of their disabilities. They are perfectly capable of having a conversation through a screen and a speaker installed in the robot. Having an inclusive society is better for all, and technology shines best here. The transit system in Tokyo is a complex network of buses, trains, subway that cover the entire city and it's run by different operators. This company has their own lines and stations that connect each other and make the life easier for the people in Tokyo. Tokyo has the most efficient train network covering the whole city with more than 280 stations. Tokyo subway lines will help you to get almost any destination quickly and easy. Riding the subway has never been simple. The Tokyo system offers a variety of discount tickets that are a good way to save cash if you are traveling a lot by subway. Probably there are other capitals in the world that have an excellent transit system too. But none of them have moved more passengers, has more connections. None of them are more punctual, clean, fast, trusted, and reliable than the Tokyo metro system. If I only have to use one word to describe the Tokyo transit system, that will be brilliant. And it's not just because the modern trains or the professional operators who run this business. It's also applied for the people's behavior on the city of Tokyo. The first things you notice when entering a station in Tokyo is the orderly way people move around. They do not stand in random circles or block any entrance. They tend to keep their distance and wait in line in front of the precise door to enter the train. People wait by the side until everybody is off the train. Inside the train, passengers are quiet and people are not allowed to talk on the phone. Everybody uses the left side to go up the escalator and leaves the right side for the people in a hurry. Nobody trashes their train. There is a stunning amount of consideration for the community in this country.
One of my favorite experiences in Tokyo was staying in a capsule hotel for 9 hours, and that's its name for this unique futuristic hotel at Sudobashi. Sometimes you just need basic amenities in a big city, or maybe a few hours of napping. The concept behind the name is having 1 hour of bathing, 7 hours of sleeping, and 1 hour to get dressed. These three actions will recharge your body from a brand new day. In general, my experience was very positive. Inside, just running through my mind. Wonder if there's peace I could find. Instead of always being on the ground. I need a new purpose. I'm looking for so much more. Don't leave me here searching. That's what I'm longing for Times are getting crazy Everything seems hazy Is there some place for safety? Japan's geography has a strong influence on its people. Most of its landscape has mountains. In fact, only 15% of its territory is fitting for housing and farming. But because of the intense rainy season and high level of humidity, this country is so green and beautiful. For centuries, Japan has been doing something called land reclamation. It's a project to gain territory in the ocean for the construction of man-made islands. Reclaimed land is made up of landfills, waste material, and soil removed from construction site. It's not just used to create new construction in harbors, but also used to make dikes in inland areas to prevent flooding. In fact, all this terrain was not here hundreds of years ago. Having an impressive infrastructure is important for the development of any country, and all this would be impossible without heavy investment in education. This is the Kadokawa Culture Museum and Library, a place where imagination flourishes. This is the way it should be. Investing in reading a good book is the key to success, and Japan knows well how to do it. Because reading at this culture museum and library is always beautiful. My name is Enrique Dominguez. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. See you next time.